Variety is the spice of life. Only shooting stars break the This video and my channel are sponsored by untap.gg. Want to check out your stats for your decks like this one right here? You can use that using untap.gg's plugin, which you can download using the link in the description of the video. Untap.gg helps you be a better player in Magic the Gathering Arena by giving you more information. Uh, it's able to tell you what other decks people are playing, how your deck's been matching up. What do you do well against? What do you do awfully against? and help you make adjustments so you can be the best that you can be. Hi, I'm Amy the Amazonian, and welcome to Brawl Stars! Today we're playing one of my favorite commanders, Volo. Now, Volo is a deck I actually have in paper, but in paper, I have a bit more of a clones theme, whereas in Arena, I have a mutate, big, stompy, cool, interactive creature theme, because, well, shucks, Volo's great. Volo is a way for you to make copies of creatures that don't share creature types with other creatures you have on the battlefield or in the graveyard. So that means that we have some unusual and unique creature types like walrus or snake. And we also have some creatures with amazingly strong enter the battlefield abilities like Cavalier of Thorns um or maybe our new recent edition titan of industry this deck just went through a big upgrade and i want to just put it out there volo is going to rank up against very powerful commanders if you're playing arena which means that you do need to add really good cards if you want to go toe to toe with them so i've added in some counter spells we are in blue after all and of course the biggest the baddest the greenest and the meanest of creatures we also have a little bit of cool interplay in this deck uh, with cards like Volo and Uro. So you have to have creature types that you do not have in your graveyard or battlefield. So how do you get those creatures out of your graveyard if maybe you've already cast an ooze and you really want to copy an ooze? Just escape from the graveyard! It's, it's perfect! It's so smart! Like, you just... You have this card that's already amazing and simic, and boom, it actually gives you synergy. So the best thing you can do in this deck, though, is turn one, get down a land or elf. Turn two, maybe a little bit more ramp. Turn three, volo. And ideally, you're getting a spark double on it, so you can have three volos, one of which is not legendary. Well, two of which are not legendary. Um, you can copy anything that's not a human or a wizard using Volo, which means that you can end up with, like, these amazing piles of creatures that can win you the game on the spot. Looking at you, Crater Hoof Behemoth. Yes, this is the special Crater Hoof Behemoth art. If you haven't seen, by the way, how this Crater Hoof Behemoth art was discovered in Arena, I have a video of it. It was very funny. I have no idea what the video is called, but it's somewhere in my video's archive. So we're going to take this deck... We're gonna clone some creatures, we're gonna YOLO with VOLO, and we're gonna do it in the queue. We're up against Angels! It's Giada Font of Hope. Uh, this is not the most impressive hand, but I do think it's keepable, so I will keep it. Giada, if you're not familiar with her, is an angelic menace. She's a two-mana 2-2 two -two with flying and vigilance. She makes other angels when they enter the battlefield get plus one plus one for each other angel that you control. Well, including Giada, just not counting the one that just entered the battlefield. And she's also ramp for angels. You can tap her to cast angels. It's so good. She really does it all. That's why when they play her on turn two, we're going to counter her using Wash Away, a card that shouldn't be allowed in Historic Brawl. But since it is, it's kind of an auto-include in a lot of blue decks. Hey, Wash Away. You're not a fun or fair card. I've got a Mox Amber. Okay, a bit more mana. And we're going to go for the Menagerie Curator. Menagerie Curator is a mana-creating creature that can only make mana for creatures. But, which is kind of fun and interesting, this is a card that cares about uniqueness of creature type. So, for example, Volo. Do we have any other humans or wizards in the deck? No, we don't. There's a human on the battlefield, the curator, but she only cares about what's in your library. So we got to draw a card. Look at that, more land. Yada's back. 
And now we have up to five mana here. Uh, I'm just going to go for ramping to start. Topiary Stomper. These are going to come into play and grab me some basic lands. I'm going to grab this forest. And we're going to grab another forest. And now I'm going to play a forest. Because I want to hold up the Brazen Borrower. The reason I want to do this is if they play another angel, I want to throw Giada back into their hand so it doesn't get whatever the buff is. It would be, there's two angels out right now, um, so it'd be getting two plus one plus one counters. I could also toss the angel back depending on which angel it is. Okay, so there's some booties. That's going to give haste. If they go to equip Giada, and they are, we're saying get out of there. I am not putting up with this right now. By the way, it is notable. Menagerie Curator did not draw me a card on these because we have other plants, the Elysian Caryatid, and dinosaurs. I think we have, like, the Shifting Ceratops and a few others uh, in there. Okay, so Giada's back out, but they can't do anything else this turn, which is fine with me. Now we're going to win the game. Crater of Behemoth. It's a beast. I have no other beasts out or on the battlefield or graveyard. So we get to Crater of Behemoth. We hit the space bar, and we win the game. It's sweet, it's simple, and it's smashing. Hello there, Gix, Yogmoth, Praetor. Uh, this hand is a little slow. We're not doing anything until turn four, so I'm going to mulligan here. This looks a bit better. Um, I will keep this, even though our castables aren't that impressive. Go ahead and hit keep there. Gix, Yogmoth, Praetor is a... I guess a card draw and... Kind of cool guy. He makes it so when your cards, like these very evasive little guys, hit your opponent, you can pay one life and draw a card. It, it's a good way to get like blank weenies. Like you just keep on getting more creatures because you keep drawing more cards to get more creatures to draw more cards. There is one build of Gix that I had seen floating around, which used Apostles, where you can play any number of them in your deck. And you just keep drawing them and drawing them and drawing them and drawing them. It was a really interesting build. Um, I was kind of hoping we'd see that there. But this is just, right now, mono black one drops. Um, I am really glad I did a mulligan, though. Because otherwise, I think I would be kind of screwed here. So let's see. We've got ramp. And I'm going to do a bit more ramp. And I'm just going to pass the turn. Sea Dasher Octopus does have flash. And I could have flashed it out to block the Foulmire Knight. But it's not really a trade I want to do. Okay. They're drawing one, two. I think they might just draw two unless they... Nope. Okay. Wait, they went for three. They filled up their hand. That's smart. That's a good way to do it. But, and now hear me out. What if I had a Gex? I didn't have anything I could copy with Volo there. I had no one cost creatures. So we're going to use Mind Flayer. And we're gonna go hang out with our buddy Gix. Nice. Okay, so they removed our Mind Flayer. Let me draw a card. And now Gix is back. They're hitting me for three. And remember, every time they pay a life... I'm, I've been losing one life too. So it's, it's kind of like one for one, but they've been drawing cards out of it. I feel like you have too many cards in hand. Maybe they have two more one, one drops. Ooh, the Pilfering Imp. That's a good one. Hmm. Got Metamorphs. I've got the Night Pack Ambusher. I do like the idea of doing this or using Key to the Archive to try to find mass removal. They do have Pilfering Imp. They could make me discard whatever I happen to get here, but we're going to make them do it. In they go. One, two, three, four, five. Down to 11 life. Your hand is already full. So they attacked with this, meaning that they're not going to be able to make me discard off it. They could still have a Thought Seize. 
Do you? Do you have a thoughtsies? Are we like full head empty mode here? Wow, they, they overdrew a little bit. They paid life for that too. Uh, let's go for Day of Judgment. Great, and they'll be drawing cards and losing more life off the Phyrexian Arena. Uh, now, Volo? I could get Volo down this turn, but I think he would just die. So I'm going to... Hmm. I'm just going to play a land. Gonna come and tap. Get out a little more ramp. And now next turn, I'm thinking Volo. I'm thinking Volo, maybe a clone. Okay, well... Maybe I won't have mana for that. I, I currently do, unless they find a way to get rid of these, which they're in black, meaning they have enchantment destruction, not so much artifact destruction. Oh, sweet, Ephemia! You have enchantments in your graveyard? You don't have enchantments in the graveyard. This is, this is just an evasive creature. Order of Midnight, they're bringing back more weenies. Pilfering Imp! And here we go! It's Volo! And I'm going to cast Phyrexian Metamorph. And I will pay the, uh, the blue mana here. What do I want to copy? Heatily Archive. Mm, Doomblade? That's not useful here. Regrowth? Okay. Growth Spiral. Ramp is nice. I'll take the regrowth. And then I'm going to discard it, because I don't actually want to regrowth anything. Like, yes, there's a board wipe there, but I know we could do better. Let's do this again. I want to ramp. Oh, hey, approach of the second sun. Well, that sounds like a good card. Uh, I'm going to drop the Sea Dasher Octopus. And play beside you. So I ramped. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen mana next turn. And a little bit of life gain, too. They've eaten Volo. That's okay. I can afford to replay him. And you've also paid so much life. I have not hit my opponent a single time in this game. See how they have eight life? That's on them, not on me. Okay, so now they're going for the pilfering imp. What do you want to hit? Do you want to hit the dog or the approach? Darn. <laughs> it was so it was totally worth it though. Uh, I'm going to open up this mind stone. Because I have more mana than I even know what to do with. And we'll throw down the night pack ambusher. They do know about it. And get a couple doggies. Hitting me for four. Now you're gonna have to play some blockers. Yeah, that... You're gonna have to play blockers. Nice! Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. Great addition to, like, any monocolored Brawl deck. Seriously. Add this to your monocolored Brawl decks. It's good. Vito? Ooh, if only they had done that pre-combat and given these lifelink. Painted adversary. Gonna spit out any zombies. Yes, they are. Okay, and now that they're tapped out. Dogs, dogs, more dogs. Hello, Titan of Industry. This has reach. It can also gain me life. These are both very good things in this situation. Uh, I'm going to gain life and make a rhino. And then I'm going to... Gain life, and make a rhino. And then I'm going to attack my opponent with these two night pack ambushers. Two life. End the turn. Phyrexian Arena, currently threatening lethal on them. Now, they can give everything lifelink here. They can. And it would deal a lot of damage to me. But, 
they would also have to sacrifice their creatures because they'd have to attack into things that are bigger than theirs. Got zombies, Vito. They have two, four, six, eight, nine. So they could gain nine. It would drain me for nine. Still wouldn't be enough, though. Especially because these have trample. So even if they had some little blockers, we'd just be swinging straight through them. Okay, so they're going for it. I'll block the flyers. I'll block on the ground. Lifelink. Stabilizes them back up to 10. But we have more than 20 power on the battlefield. This is why we gained life off the Titan of Industries. Crux of Fate, though. Ooh. I don't have any creatures left. Follow, return to the battlefield, please. Follow's like, you have too much mana. You need creatures for me to clone. Hmm. You're still losing life. You're still drawing cards. I'm not drawing cards. Oh, nice! Blood on the snow to return Vito to the battlefield. Great idea. And a vampire interloper. Oh, a fairy! Perfect! Now I can block their vampires. And unless they can gain six life, I'm not too worried here. I do see three life they could gain, though. Marley Pixie, you're so cute. Oh, she's wearing a little, like, chipmunk pelt. She got blueberries behind her. We've got a lot of mana off the Nykthos. With Devotion. Okay, they're swinging in. I'll block with the clone. They're giving it lifelink. I lose two. I'm down to four life. We're gonna need something big, something scary, something stompy, something to win us the game here. Drana, Liberator of Malakir. Nice. And the Hope of Giraper. Two more flyers. Oof. Glass Pool Mimic right now? Not the most helpful thing. Uh, we can still make more flyers, though. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. This. That. Now, Drana, if she deals combat damage to me, does put plus one, plus one counters. They do have four damage swinging in here. This is lethal with the veto pump. They come on in. We will block. And they'll activate veto. And we're going to get drained for four because they can deal four damage here. Gix might not have done that much, but Vito really an all-star in this game. GG, opponent. GG. We're playing up against dragons. Dragons and more dragons. Similarly to Volo, Miriam's all about cloning creatures, but she only clones dragons. But she even makes clones of legendaries and makes them non-legendary, making her insanely strong. 
Miriam, one of my favorite dragons commanders, possibly the best commander printed last year. Uh, I think that it's a really, really cool design, a really cool build. And I honestly wish I could afford some of like the paper dragons because building this in paper sounds like a blast. Okay, let's start partying. Um, Bright and early, they're discounting. We could go for ramp. We could go for anything. I'm going to go for Volo. I'm just going to hope that they do not have removal in their hand for my commander. Because if they don't, our next turn could be amazing. Thread revealing the fearsome whelp. And dragon fire. Darn. I guess we'll just have to have a regular not so amazing next turn. Cavalier of Thorns. Let's get ourselves some more mana. Wow, we whiffed! There were no lands in the top five cards of my deck. I guess I'm glad we know that. I was personally hoping we'd get a forest so I could play the Llanowar Elf. Look, a land. A little surprised by that, actually. Uh, we could play our Volo again. So I think I will. Unfortunately, some cards did get put into our graveyard. Act of negation. Well, I guess they won't be playing a dragon next turn. I'll attack them with the Cavalier of Thorns. They have to pretty much... Pay all their mana here. Yep. We've got a wash away for their commander. That's probably a very good thing. But I'd need to leave up a mana if I want to do that, which means no playing Volo. So instead, I'll play Cold Steel Heart, Lane Green, and then a Risen Reef. This is an elemental, by the way, so it wouldn't get cloned anyway. I will. Attack with the Cavalier of Thorns. And now I'm going to chill. We can technically cast the full cost wash away too if they don't play Miriam this turn. Or they even get the scry. No Miriams. Going to the bottom. They probably want lands. We've got the Sea Dash or Octopus. We've got Volo. We've got Cultivator. Um, we have a beast that got milled. We do. There's a shark beast. Um, that doesn't mean we can't use these mutatos, though. We just have to be weird about it. Um, do I feel like playing Volo again? Yes. I would love to actually get to use my commander. So Volo is on the battlefield. We attack for another five. Okay. By the way, any dragons in their hand have been getting discounted every single turn. But I feel like they don't have that many dragons in their hand. Okay, well, there's one. Lozan. Costs one less. Lozan's really cool. Turns casting dragons into damage. But that damage cannot be dealt to commanders. So they can't hit Volo. They can hit anything else. But they can't hit him. Okay, well, that can hit him. Dang it! What's a girl gotta do? Give her the list, ding dang, Lozan! I'm gonna start with Quandrix Cultivator. I'm gonna get a forest. Come on, give me the forest. Great. Then I'm going to mutate. This great horn to this risen reef. I'm gonna get some of the good blue stuff. And then I'm going to attack with you, you, and you. Okay, cool. I was just hoping they would let this go through. It's cool that they didn't. We thin our deck for more lands. If they had blocked with Lozan, I would have mutated onto the uh, elf in order to kill Lozan. Miriam comes out. 
They can deal six damage to any target. They chose my mutate stack. That's a good choice. And they're scrying to the bottom, probably looking for dragons. They don't have one red, so they can't bring back spit flame. That's cool mimic. Okay, we're going to start with the mimic. We're going to copy the Cavalier of Thorns. Get land. And I'm going to attack with... Ugh, she's bigger. We can attack with both. I don't think it's that great. I think we just play you. Play your Volo. And Scry. Solemn Simulacrum. We would get two. Not the worst. Could be better, though. Could be better. I'll take it. Now let's see what dragon they get. None. Okay, I'm cool with none. Keep thinning the stack. Every land we take out is a land that we're not going to draw. If I attack with everything here, they can block, block, probably block. I, I think this is worth it. I'm going in for the attack all. Especially because a Cavalier of Thorns dying. If it's the real one, not the fake one, not the fakey jakey, uh, we can actually bring back something from our graveyard. Sweet. They're down to three. We're super wide. My commander's back here. And we're going to put something on top of our deck. Something like... The Great Hens. Passing Shore Shark. Mind Flayer. I kind of like Mind Flayer here. I think Mind Flayer is the try to win the game this next turn card. Whereas Great Henge would be the draw the game out kind of card. And we are here and we are winning! Nice work, Volo! Obnixilus, the adversary. Hey there, Obnob. Obnixilus or Mobnixilus is a, I guess, sacrifice and discard commander. A uh, very strong one at that, uh, especially if you can kind of get yourself rolling. Really builds momentum quickly. Um, we're going to do our best against Obnixilus and their little demons, devils, and sacrificing everythings. Mana Weft Sliver or Sanctum Weaver. I'm going to go with Sanctum Weaver to start uh, because I feel like having two toughness is slightly safer against this deck. Nice. Crooks is going to make us discard. Um, I think I'll discard the Sea Dasher Octopus. I just don't think it's doing that much here. And now I can go to play my commander with the understanding that there's a good chance it will die. Or a Beery Stomper. Let's ramp. We'll get this. Ta-da! I'm a 4-4. I can't attack or block, though. It's okay. I'm still cool. I promise I'm still cool. Oh. They're stepping. Okay. I was hoping we'd get untapped land so we could go for this hinge here. But instead, I'm just going to go for Volo. If they want to kill something, it's going to be him. And Coligan's Command! I'm going to drop this Mana Weft Sliver, I think. Sounds good enough to me. Even though it is something I could play off of the uh, Great Henge here. Alright, we've got a land. Uh, I'm going to get this Henge down. They just used Artifact Removal. And I'll just gain some life. Life gain's cool. Hello there. 
I'm ready to stomp. Somebody in chat is pointing out that kind of like Volo's copies, casualty copies also have to be countered separately. Um, if you're trying to stop an Obnixilis and its clone, you're going to need to have something that targets everything on the stack, or maybe just it and a copy. Like a whirlwind denial. Always a good way to do it. Elvish Mystic. That's a good thing to steal. Now that we've got our Great Henge, I can either play the Volo again. Or go for the stuff in hand. I'm gonna play the Volo. Let's roll! Ooh, a land. And I know I'm not making any copies of the Scoot Swarm yet. Except for this one. The one from Volo! And I'll attack in with the Topiary Stomper. They trade. That's fine with me. But we've got Scootlebees. Volo. Hoof in hand. What can you play? They can definitely sacrifice the Elvish Mystic to Obnixilis, but it wouldn't be very impressive. It would be a one loyalty ob. Ooh, Rankle! They can make me sacrifice my Scoot Swarm. Discard and sacrifice. Okay. We're gonna dump this and keep this, because this one wins games more. They should be able to escape Kruxa next turn. Well, maybe not. Yeah, right now, um, they don't have quite enough cards in the graveyard. And this goes back to my graveyard, because it's mine. <gasps> oh no, but they have it. It's not discard. It is exile, though. They're going to take the Crater of Behemoth out of my hand. That's fine. Ooh! What do I want to be? I could be anything. I could even be... a Rankle? And... a Valky? Hey. You don't even have a creature in your hand! Get out of here with that nonsense! Well, I'm going to go ahead and kill Rankle. Get out of here. Get out of here! I'm going to attack with my freshly minted Rankle. I'm going to make you discard that. I'm going to make you sacrifice your Valky. And we're going to gain a solid advantage. Enough to win! Azorius Control. Not my favorite thing to play against, but I'm still willing to go up against it. Let's keep this hand. It's got some ramp got some cool, ever-growing threats. A counter spell, Not bad to have. And we're going up against Teferi, who slows the sunset. This is the Teferi that untaps and taps things. Ooh, do I want to play the plant or the sliver first? Let's start with the plant. It's really good that we went first in this game, by the way, uh, because it means that we're going to hopefully be able to keep ahead of their counter spells. What I'm a little more worried about, though, is actually... Board wipes, kill spells. Uh, with, when you have a Planeswalker as a commander, playing destroy all creature spells becomes fast and easy. Thankfully, they don't have double white right now. They have a bunch of colorless and artifact sources. Uh, in part, because he untaps artifacts. So, like, you could untap a land and then an artifact land. And that's extremely telling. Do you see this Oswald Fiddlebender? The Oswald here? Oswald is a problem because he does a stupid thing called Paradox Engine. I hate Paradox Engine. I am going to use my Volo, get some cloning on. We're going to get some basics. Get a blue. Pretty much, if you, if you see this, you know what you're up against. And I'm going to swing into Teferi because, I don't know, maybe they won't block. 
Okay, so they blocked. That's totally fine with me. Makes me feel like they're uh, already well settled in with the big nasty stuff that they have in their deck. Okay, Guild of Lotus, they can untap that for three more mana. What are you doing with this? Seven mana? Arcane Signet first. Shimmer Dragon! Oh, that's a cool one. Shimmer Dragon gets hexproof when you have lots of artifacts. They have five artifacts right now. Hmm. Speaking of artifacts, though, I need to destroy one of their artifacts. Now, I would rather do this with Volo on the battlefield, but I'm just going to do it as it is. Um, let's see. Let's go on to the actual Solemn Simulacrum and become the 6-6 six, six you want to see in the world. We're going to destroy the Gilded Lotus. Next turn, we can follow up with a bit more mutate, a bit more destruction, and we can also bounce the beasts. Uh, Pouncing Shore Shark is going to be a good follow-up. I do love mutate, and I love doubling mutate with Volo. Especially with things like Sawtust Demolisher, they get kind of disgusting. But it gets a little less nasty here because their opponent actually has two indestructible lands. I can't even destroy those. Try as I might. Hmm. Six mana. Oh my gosh, they bored him. They ate my Solemn Simulacrum slash Sawtusk Demolisher. Gross. Well, let's see what we got here. Got Sublime Epiphanies, Bouncing Shore Sharks, Cultivators. I think I'm just going to end up playing Dream Eater. And I kind of want to play it on my turn, just to toss this back into their hand. Um, let's see. This will leave me with one, two, three, four mana. So instead, I'm going to start building up a harder to deal with threat. Scoot Swarm, followed by Quandrix Cultivator to get a land. Basic Forester Island, I got those in spades. Now we have two Scoot Swarms. Which is significantly better than one Scoot Swarm. And from two, perhaps we'll have four. And from four, eight. And from eight, 16, 32, 64, 124. Anybody like Power of Twos here? I'm a big fan of Powers of Two. Sorry, 128. I totally know how to count. Alright, they went for a Blast Zone. Love that. They Blast Zoned there for X equals three, or three counters. It had three counters on it. Through tapping, untapping, ramping, all that stuff. And now Teferi is able to ult. By the way, they could have ulted last turn. They just didn't. So um, this is my Dream Eater. I um, I brought him from home. Yeah, that seems cool. That seems cool. I don't think I need that anymore. Get out of here. Whee! Oh, a walrus. This taps for two mana since we played the Dream Eater. More scrying. Thrashing Brontodon sounds great in this matchup. Teferi returns to the battlefield. And untaps a bunch of stuff. Are you going to tap my thing? Yep. Loran of the third path. No, my walrus! It was made of bronze! Ooh, a cornucopia. Wait. 
Are the charge counters not showing up on this? Or did they play it for zero? Huh. Okay. YOLO. The dragon's still able to tap these, but... I think I'll be able to take out this dragon fairly soon, or at least disrupt it. Unwinding Clock. Ooh, I am actually going to counter that. Uh, they have a lot of artifacts. This is very, very much an artifact build so far of this Teferi. And I would like to prevent them from getting these crazy untappies. Ornithopter Paradise. Oh, it's a little guy! Hi! They're tapping. Crashing Brontodon. Start with this. And I'm going to attack. With you, you, and you at the ferry. But wait, there's more. We're gonna have a mutate with the pouncing shore shark, and we're gonna get rid of this beast. It's gone. And, you know, I could also bounce Loran. But I'd rather have her die. So, decline. Unfortunately, I can't target the Shimmer Dragon. They have too many artifacts. Thank you. That was nice of them. I can destroy, like, one artifact here. But that's it. I would need to destroy two. And two of them are indestructible. Flashing Brontodon's mad. Just like me. Just like me. They got a nice full hand of cards here. Wrath of God. Okay. Um, go ahead and destroy some of their mana. And our commander returns to us. Oh, and right, that was a solemn simulacrum. Sure was. Ah ha ha, the goose! You'll never defeat me and my, uh, gilded goose. Perhaps I will get to have two geese. Ah, an emblem, hmm? What if I countered that, bounced the thing, made a copy, draw a card? You're a blue-white deck. Do you have a counterspell for my counterspell? You don't! Well, excellent! Now I have two geese! The fairy's back. Oh, welcome back, to fairy. They're untapping things. Gonna play your guardian idol. Ooh, the mysterious tome. How much mana do I have? Okay. I'm going to play Volo. And I'm going to chill. In the next turn, we're gonna go crazy. We're gonna go wild. I'm gonna hope Volo is, you know, alive. 
to the Dreamstone Hedron. Really great for untapping with Teferi. They've transformed it. Nice. The Chilling Chronicle. This is actually a really cool card. This is from, uh, I think Midnight Hunt? Yeah, with the Midnight Hunt symbol. Aw, man! I wanted to have three Bolos and four Gem Raisers. Guess it wasn't meant to be. That's fine. I'll still destroy something. Um... You either destroy the Chilling Chronicle or the Dreamstone Hedron. Gotta go for the Dreamstone Hedron here. And I'll just hang out with my little Gem Razor. I can tap it down. Primal Amulet to discount their instants and sorceries. Which are probably mostly board wipes. I'm eating food! Senate Guild Mage. Neat. Definitely an Azorius creature. I'll tap this down. And now... Once again! Bolo? Yeah! Bolo's back! And now Teferi is ulting. And I'm very upset about that. But it's not like there's anything I could do about it. Even if I had made an extra copy of this last turn, they would have been able to tap and block and do all the mean things. All this stuff is, you know, untapped now. And they also get to draw cards. We're gonna make a small army of Bolos. Now I can't do anything with this yet, but the next creature we draw Oh, we're going crazy with it. The next creature that we draw is going to get cloned. Cloned and cloned again. Assuming they don't board wipe again. I see the Wrath of God, the Supreme Verdict. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you've been up to. Wiping my board. I'm still a little sad about that early exile on the Sauce Husk Demolisher with more mutators in hand. It was going to be amazing. Seal away. Okay. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Just plussin'. All their stuff will untap, though, so if they want to, I don't know, tap... Tap, animate, tap, all this stuff. I'm gonna eat this food. Now, heart of the cards. Hit me with something amazing. That's pretty good. Let's go for it. Titan of Industry. Copied three times. Plus the original. Now you'd have to copy or like counter every single copy individually, which gets difficult. I'm going to do some shield counters, by the way. Um, I'm going to free my boys.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a sensor. That's that's not getting you very far. The fairy's protection. All right then. We're going to protect the spark doubled Volo. An assortment of these. Very good. Now their life total can't change. So we may as well like not attack. It doesn't really matter. And we hang. We're hanging. We now have uh, not actually lethal damage just because they've gained so much life off like plusing this to fairy. But we have a lot. We have a lot of stuff here. If they wipe the board, three of our creatures survive. Okay, they tucked one of the Volo tokens. They're exiling the Spark Double. And now they're wiping the board. Okay, at least these two are still here. That's not nothing. They can chill one of these this turn. But they would just untap anyway. We're going to combat. And I am swinging at Teferi. Because this is Teferi, hero of Dominari, he's very scary. Okay. All right, Magistrate Scepter. They'll be able to get that going very quickly. I was thinking, like, they could have actually blocked with Cave of the Frost Dragon and Guardian Idol. Ooh, this now has three counters on it. They're almost at spell duplicating. Well, low cost 12 mana. Great. Good for him. How much mana do I have? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Search for Scanta. Definitely flips. They have 26 cards in their graveyard. Guardian Idol swinging in for two. Mm, the clever impersonator. Why are you tapping like that? Oh! To draw seven cards. I see. Oh, counter spell! I wanted to copy the Titan to destroy the borrowed time to free the spark double, to copy the titan, to destroy the scepter. But no. It was not meant to be. That scepter is just about ready for those extra turns. Hello, Teferi. runic shot destroying my tapped creatures and they copied it because their um primal amulet has turned into primal wellspring they just use the mana from it we're back to square zero emery hi yes we know you run paradox engines The Oswald kind of told us that first. Oswald, though, generally is pretty nice with Teferi. They took their extra turn off the scepter. Anything you'd like to bring back? Maybe... Um... Oh, okay. Palladium Mirror. That's cute. I was thinking maybe, like, Gilded Lotus. That works, though. Mm-hmm. They plus. And by the way, they do have a bit of a thing going on here. Between the untapped and the first Teferi emblem, the fact that the second Teferi will be able to get another emblem soon 
this untapping every turn, them having the other untaps on the plus ability, they will be generating infinite turns. Bolt Servant also just kind of like adding a little step in there. Oh, they didn't activate it yet. I have a 2-2. Two -two. See? Uh huh. I'm not allowed to have that too, too. As Kanta digging for more spells. I don't think that we're winning this game, but I also don't think our opponent is going to be winning it in any short order. So we're going to let them take a few turns. While we wait and watch and wonder. I assume they have Midnight Clock to stop them from milling out. They can do a tiny bit of damage. And ooh, there's their spice. There's some spice. Halo Fountain. They can make their 1-1s, one untap it, make more 1-1s, one untap it, make more 1-1s. One They're not even going to deal the lethal damage. All they have to do is get 15 tokens or creatures in general and win the game. Let's see. Let's see how they manage to do it. Combat damage? Extra turns? I would rather they do it with, you know, an alternate win condition. Coming in? Okay, they have two extra turns after this one. They're almost there. Ah, not even using the fountain. Okay, they're, they're trying to expedite the process. They're saying, I've got enough turns, I've got enough damage, I'm just going to swing in. Nothing fancy. Damn, I kind of wanted them to do something fancy. But they're being considerate. One more turn! And a good game. Took a while, but they got there. Nickel Bolus the Ravager! I'm actually thinking about building this deck in paper, but mine would be crime. I don't know what theirs would be, by which I mean playing my opponent's cards. I think it's one of the most fun things you can do in Magic. Nickel Bolus the Ravager enters the battlefield and makes your opponent discard. It's really solid as just a Grixis Control Commander, which is exactly why I'm hoping that they're not playing Grixis Control. Okay, so far, nothing has happened. I'm gonna play my Walrus. Cuckoo could chew, Nickel Bolas. Are you going to kill this? Destroy it? Oh no. It's a I was about to say, I think they're going to deal two damage and then destroy an artifact. It's the two for one! Thorn Mammoth? Doesn't feel that great if they're not playing a lot of creatures. It can kill their commander. Uh, Glass Pool Mimic is mostly just going to be a land here. I'm going to throw both of these to the bottom. Four mana. Nickel Bolt. There he is. Nicky B. And I'm going to drop the Night Pack Ambusher. And then I'm going to play Scoot Swarm and make a little bug. One bug, two bug. So this Nickel Bolas, by the way, not just here to discard. It also transforms into a very strong Planeswalker. Nickel Bolas, the Arisen. This is Baby Bolas here on the left. This is Big Nasty Bolas on the right. Um, Yeah, you can see uh, if they get this out and then they plus it a few times, they pretty much win the game. It's cool. Expressive iteration. Look at the top three cards. One into hand, one to the bottom of the deck, and one into exile. Ooh, a chromatic lantern. Got a dream eater here. Or bugs. Play the ooze, but I'd rather try to get my commander online. They may be able to flip this next turn. Now they can. They have the mana. But instead, they're going to go for the throat. 
and eliminate my scoot bug before it gets any scarier. Before it actually makes scoots. Right now we're just making insect tokens. Good little bugabugs. These are really pretty. Scargan Hellkite. They put counters on it so they'll be able to uh, snap some damage at things. Hmm. I'm gonna do this on my turn before they can activate this. Nope, 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 nope. Hmm. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. So let's see, did we put any beasts in the graveyard? Indeed we didn't! Aha! I would like to mutate. So we threw back their mana, because this has such a strong enter the battlefield, and it would need to get an untapped mana source if they wanted to flip this over. Skargan Hellkite's coming back with the counter so it can shoot down Volo. You know what time it is? It's mutating time. We're going to go ahead and mutate onto. Want a big flyer? Do I want something on the ground? Let's put let's put it on the ground. Insect token. Now this is about to get weird because we're gonna mutate and then we're gonna mutate again. And I'm going to destroy their land. Okay, cool, right? Now we're going to destroy their land. And then we're going to destroy their mm, land. Looking so good. And I can actually just hold my heroic intervention here. They have three mana now. Good. Chromatic Lantern. Great. I have land, the land you do not have. And I kind of like the idea of just like swinging in with everything and then heroic interventioning. Um, doesn't feel that necessary, though, so instead I'm going to go for this ooze, making sure it's- yep, yeah, it's tapping blue mana. Good. We're gonna get twos. This two ooze. Mm-hmm. There are creatures in my graveyard. Many creatures in my graveyard. Dragon's Horde. That is more mana rocks. Mind stone. I don't mind that. And I'm going to start building up an ooze. Let's go ahead and go. Yum, yum, yum. Um, munch, munch, munch. Mm hmm. How about a, uh, mmm, tasty? And we're going to mutate again. Because we can. We only get one mutate, by the way, because it is a beast. And our opponent says, oh, okay. We were going to get one land and destroy two permanents. Like, I don't know, Chromatic Lantern and Dragon's Horde. And then we were going to keep eating the graveyard and saying, mm, yum, 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 tasty. Because we're mutating monsters. If you want to see more Mutate, by the way, I'll recommend you check out Ivy or Tonos, two other Simic commanders that have some great Mutate synergy. As always, though, thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. If you ever want to catch me filming this live, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, where I stream almost every single day. Uh, I've been mostly playing Magic, but... Uh, I've also joined the dark side, and I've been playing some Fortnite on occasion, and also with my uh, fellow streamer friend Voxy, we've been playing horror games, and we just started playing The Quarry. I don't really understand the game, but I think our friends are turning into werewolves. I hope you enjoyed this deck, and thank you again for watching!